Guess who? Um, wait, wait, I know that hand. Is it, uh, I'm not saying anything. Wait, oh man, is it, is it, ugh, give me a hint. Nope. Um, is it, is it me? Yes, you got you. Oh, hey, you guys. I didn't see you there. I was just sneaking up on myself. What's up? Welcome to the Daily Allison. Today is Monday. You know what that means. The weekend is far away. <sighs> I don't, look, this is what I'd look like if my shoulders were up here and I had no neck. I like it. What do you think? Oh, hey, you guys. I have to turn like this because I have no neck. So if someone called my name, they'd be like, Allison, and I'd be like, what? Which actually is sort of how I feel right now, on the lower part of me, because um, I think that I sort of threw my back out trying to fix my vacuum. I hoisted, it's very heavy, and I hoisted the whole thing up on a table, and I was like leaning over, and I pulled the whole bottom plate off, and then I took the brush roll out, and look at me dropping vacuum terms like I'm some kind of handy vacuuming woman. Um, and then I like snipped all the hair off the brush roll that was stuck on there and it was disgusting. Um, and I wore gloves to do it and then I like really, really disinfected the area where the vacuum was and then, because the brush roll wasn't turning and I even removed the belt and then put it back on and then I, I cinched it. Um, and then I put a little chic tie-dyed blouse over it, because that's a good look. Um, and then I accessorized. And then I plugged it in in my room, and the brush roll still isn't turning. <sighs> so, um, then I went online and I read this article, like, how to care for your vacuum, in, you know, a few easy steps. And I started reading, I'm like, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And then if this were a sitcom, like, the big clock would spin around, and then I'm just like, oh my god, step 49, remove the nuts and bolts from this and lubricate them and then put them back in, and, and I'm like, oh my god, I cannot do that. I don't want to. It's not worth it. So I don't have the makings of someone who can take care of their own vacuum. It's good that I found that out now at age 17. Um, and also, my microwave still is not working, I still don't have a new one, I'm trying to find a stupid receipt, um, and I think that I also threw my back out from trying to cook in the oven, which makes me, I'm like a delicate flower, um, and, uh, there's no joke opportunity here, so I'm just going to move on, I wish I had never brought it up. Why do I keep doing that? I just, why don't I think before I speak? I don't know. Um, are you guys watching Next Food Network Star? I am obsessed with this show. You're probably not watching it because you might be watching True Blood, which is on HBO at the same time. Um, my loyalty is with Next Food Network Star, and if anyone's watching that, I would be happy to talk at length about it because I love it, and I'm going to reveal something that happened in the last episode if you don't want to know plug up your ears, do it now, this is your warning, okay, here we go, I'm glad Eddie got the boot, because what the f hell was the heck, what the, was up with his eyebrows, does he use shoe polish to style them, and also he was condescending, and his salad, he's lifted that recipe from the Paula Deen cookbook, what's up with that, I would have been happy to see Teddy go too, just like Sugi Susie Fogelson said, because Teddy is a real piece of work as well. As for True Blood, the makeup artist on Red Eye watched that show, and as she was talking about it, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should be watching this show, too, in another life when I have HBO again. Let's just go to our guest, shall we? Um, it is my friend, Courtney Reimer. I'm excited to have my friend Courtney Reimer on the show. She is a writer and a recently uh, turned social media enthusiast which means that she Twitters a lot, and her Twitters are really good, and she's, like, knowledgeable in all areas of social media and whatnot, and writes about it. Um, and also, she and I talk often about our mutual identity crises, which is, like, what, how do we define ourselves these days? I could go on, but we're going to be out of time. 
and I want to make sure we have enough time to talk about Courtney, so I'll just, or talk to Courtney, so I'll just, uh, I'll just leave that sort of heavy, depressing thought right there, right here in the middle of you and me. Okay, here we go. Let's call her. Courtney. Hi. Hello. You are on live tape with the Daily Allison. How are you? I'm okay. I'm not used to being on this side of the interview, really, but I will do my best. Yes. Well, thus far, you're doing super well. You sound comfortable. <laughs> I am. I'm actually on my bed. Maybe that's why. <laughs> oh, good. Everyone should do interviews there on your bed. On my bed? Well, okay. I'll, I'll see about that. So, I chatted a real blue streak before we started this, so we aren't going to have that much time. So, I think we should just go right into, how did you get the name Bard of Lard? <laughs> well, I actually made it up myself. And oh. I'm not usually into self-branding, but it kind of came to me after a uh, Cajun boy at Gawker stole my, not stole, I'm sorry, uh, correction, after he um, was inspired by a tweet of mine about uh, Gwyneth Paltrow on uh, The Tonight Show. She walked out and she had all this goop, which yeah. is an easy thing to say, on her legs. And I thought, wow, what does that look like to me? It looks kind of like animal grease, like she jumped into a chicken fryer or something. And I was like, <laughs> huh, she doesn't eat animals. So I just, you know, I wrote and Gwyneth doesn't eat animals, she wears their fat on her legs, or something like that. And so then uh, Katie Boy posted something to Docker about the grease on Gwyneth's legs, like really trenchant uh, and, you know, probing journalism. And uh, it got a lot of hits, and people were like, wow, that's amazing. And I was like, this, of all things, is, is what my crowning achievement is going to be. And so when I posted it onto my Tumblr, uh, because it was a crowning achievement, right. I referred to myself as the Bard of Lard. Wow, and now how has your life changed since then? Um, well, I have gotten emails from strangers, one of whom I mistakenly identified as a New York Times writer because he, ha he shared a name with a uh, New York Times writer who I've, I've read quite a bit, and mm -hmm. um, he wrote that he, you know, was president of my fan club or something like that, and I thought, wow, this is going to be my end to an actual important journalism job, but it turned out it wasn't him, so that, I guess that was the biggest moment. Um, I got some new followers, you know, that's really important to grow your follower list. It totally is. See, I believe, <laughs> I, I, I want to believe that it actually is. It, it remains to be seen whether having a ton of Twitter followers, like what that actually means, other than you feel really good about yourself. I know, you're supposed to not care, but, like, as an insecure writer and as somebody who, you know, needs a lot of feedback and to know that I'm not shouting into the ether with no one there to listen, right. it's just, I don't know. I mean, I, you're supposed to not care about your number of followers, but I am kind of flattered when somebody asks me, especially someone that I've, you know, followed and thought they were funny or smart or something, so... Oh, well, I like it. Yeah. Oh, my God. When I saw that Pat Kiernan was following me, I was, like, happy for a good hour. I know. Me, too. And uh, and Susan Orlean, who's, like, you Oh, know, wow. Like, yeah. Modern, I was, like, oh, my God. I don't think... I think she just followed me by accident, but I'm, I'm going to stay quiet for a while and hope that she doesn't notice how idiot, idiotic I really am. So. I know. Do you, per do you periodically go and check to make sure that those people are still following you? Oh, my God. I, yes. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> so, we're so lame. I do. I know. Well, you know, it's really only because you can direct message someone if they're following you, too. Actually, right. Not why, but I just, you know, when I need a... Actually, I've done that before, not with a famous person, but, like, somebody who I like a lot. And then I saw he wrote some angry tweet about people promoting themselves and I thought, oh, I think maybe I've written a self-promoting tweet before or something that could be construed as such and I was like, I bet he unfollowed me and he did. Oh, he, did you contact him about it? I, yeah, I was like, he, I still followed him and I thought it, he was really funny. Uh, maybe I will drop his name and he will be like, please don't because he doesn't want his name Steen, P-H-E-E 
and D, and his his avatar is a picture of a dog pooping. Huh. I'm told in Paris, and um, he, I was like, I I think you're brilliant, and I will never unfollow you, or like I can't quit you, or some <laughs> stupid old cultural reference. And he was like, that was nice of you, and he refollowed me. So. Oh, good. Well, see, you you tackled the problem right there. And now we're out of time. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm glad we could talk about my pretty much the only thing I do nowadays, which is tweet. <laughs> Me too. I I feel like I know more about the way that you tweet now. Um. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Alex. Bye. Once again, we're over time. Hope you enjoyed that. There's a lot of Twitter chatter. If you're not on Twitter, get on there. It's fun. Talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye.